Hi, this is Tim from Cairo Up, and today I wanted to show you how to assess and manage the number one cause of dizziness, and that's BPPV. BPPV affects the semicircular canals, of which there are three on each side. And each one of those canals is a hollow tube that's filled with a fluid called endolymph. That tube is lined with tiny cilia, or nerve endings, that allow sensation of how that endolymph is moving. Well, each of those semicircular canals is connected to a sac at the bottom, a common sac called the utricle. And sometimes debris or stones from the utricle finds its way into a semicircular canal and then errantly stimulates those cilia, and that results in dizziness or vertigo. It's important to recognize which side and which canal is involved because that will direct our treatment and determine the effectiveness. There are three canals on each side. There's a horizontal canal that's oriented horizontally, and if this canal were filled with fluid, in order to move the fluid, the patient would shake their head back and forth as though they're, they're saying no. There's an anterior canal that's oriented about 40 degrees from a frontal plane in a forward direction, and to make that endolymph move, we're going to have the patient nod their head back and forth yes. And the last canal is the posterior canal, which is oriented about 60 degrees from the, from the central plane. And to make that move, we'd have the patient tip their head back and forth, their ear toward their shoulder, or perform, perform a somersault. So we're going to look at the number one cause of dizziness. Dizziness involving the horizontal canal is really rare, 1, 2, 3 percent. Involvement of the anterior posterior canal is more common, but almost all cases involve the posterior canal. And so the test to assess that is the Dix-Hall-Pike maneuver. The way that we perform the Dix-Hall-Pike maneuver is we're going to have the patient be long sitting on the table. We're going to move them into a position to make sure their head can come off the back of the table. So come back just a little bit. And then in one simple movement, we're going to rotate the patient's head and tip them back so that their head comes off the back of the table. So we're going to do this fairly abruptly. We're going to rotate their head and tip them back. This is the Dix Hall Pike Maneuver, and in this instance I'm testing the left ear. I'm testing the left posterior canal. If there's no dizziness, we have the patient sit back up, and we perform the same thing on the opposite side, rotating toward the right, and we'd lie them back. Whichever is the down-facing ear is the side that's affected, and this would affect the posterior canal. What we're looking for is reproduction of dizziness, or nausea, or nystagmus, where the patient's eyes are moving. Now once we've identified the side and the canal, if it's the posterior canal, let's say that it affected the left side, we're going to do a maneuver called the Epley maneuver, or the canalith repositioning maneuver. This is divided into four steps. The first step is identical to the Dix Hall Pike test. We're going to rotate that patient's head toward the affected side and drop them back off the table. We're going to do that fairly, fairly abruptly, but from now on all of our movements are slow. Because we have to remember this debris is moving through oil or, or fluid-filled channels. I kind of think of it like gold flakes in a gold schlager. It takes some time for that to settle. So we have the patient in this position. That's step one. Step two is to slowly rotate their head over a period of about 30 to 60 seconds to the opposite side. And once we get to the opposite side, again, we're looking for any nystagmus. We're looking for nausea or dizziness. Once that's faded for 30 seconds, then we can move to step three, and that's having the patient roll onto that affected side. So go ahead and roll onto your right side. And we're going to keep their ear facing downward. Once dizziness has faded for 30 seconds, we're then going to sit the patient back up with their head rotated. We're going to hold that for 30 seconds, and once dizziness fades, back to a neutral position. So what we've done is we've tipped that posterior canal around to move that debris back into the utricle and out of the area of concern. Sometimes it takes multiple sessions that if this doesn't clear the dizziness, we can retest with the Dix-Hall Pike Maneuver. If it doesn't clear the dizziness, we can repeat it. But we shouldn't repeat it for at least 15 minutes after the first time because sometimes partial debris comes out and it's sitting right at the opening of the horizontal canal and we can cause a second dizziness. So we're going to repeat it after a 15 minute break. We can do that two or three, four times per session, but if that doesn't cut it, then we're going to have the patient come back. This is successful in 80 to 95 percent of cases. Very effective. If you'd like to review any of these tests, or if you'd like to see the other tests and treatment for the other canals, I'd uh, encourage you to log on to ChiroUp.com. We have a brand new BPP protocol 
We developed it from the research. We sent it past our board of directors who were able to vet out the best information. We also sent it past an ENT, who's a teaching ENT, who gave it high regards. I hope that you'll give it high regards as well. There's a huge difference between treating someone and applying best practice care. Thanks for trusting Cairo to help you with the latter.